Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your monthly reading for April 2024. This is for Virgo and Virgo Rising, and you, ooh, we're going to jump right into it. I hope you are sitting down for this, Virgo. It is about to get really hot in here. This is a really big game-changing month. All right, A lot of different energies in April, and it is going to be a deeply transformative month for you, particularly particularly we're going to talk about that now this month april first yes i'm wearing my glasses so you may see a little uh, a glare but i get there's just so many notes okay uh so let it be, but well let's do it all right this is uh uh the the first mercury retrograde okay of the year it starts this month we have the first solar eclipse of the month uh or of the year this month it is huge huge and then we also have the jupiter uranus conjunction that hasn't happened in over a decade this is going to be a really big month we have like six six conjunctions so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you like the high level stuff i'm going to tell you what's happening uh and then if you are new to my channel after i do your spread i break it down week by week i pull more cards and we will get into it but let's let's go ahead and get started uh you know april 1st is when mercury does go retrograde it's going to go retrograde in aries now i actually like this mercury retrograde retrograde and Virgo, I think that you're also going to really, really appreciate it because it's such a fiery, amped up month. It's going to be nice to just Ooh, reassess things, rethink things. Now, this is definitely going to be a big thing for you. You're probably going to be revisiting a lot of things from the past and reevaluating things because Mercury is your ruling planet. So when Mercury goes retrograde, it affects you and Gemini's the most because Gemini's also, uh, Mercury is a ruling planet for that. So just know that Sure. Yeah. Everything that happens with Mercury retrograde, uh, you know, miscommunications and misplacing things and uh, travel stuff, you know, the, the, they're going to happen. But in the whole in the bigger picture here is that it's going to be nice. You're going to going to appreciate it. Now, Mars is a huge player this month. It's still in Pisces for most of the month. OK, so keep that in mind. That is Mars and Saturn and neptune okay in pisces in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships so you'll you'll still feel some activity there it can be career related it can be love related just think one-on-one -on -one uh relationships now april 4th this is when venus moves into aries so me venus is leaving pisces venus is leaving mars venus is going into aries now this is really amped up energy, okay? Very amped up energy, a little, you know, fired up, very passion driven, a lot of passion, uh, but in a very like Moulin Rouge kind of way, like, ar, ar, ar. like it's, it's got to be very, very, very high passion. Let's put it that way. Now, what's really interesting about this is that Venus is moving into areas where Mercury is going to be retrograde. So, this is all happening. Aries rules your eighth house of not only transformation, death and rebirth, life cycles, but the eighth house is intimacy. So will old flames come back into your life? Possibly, possibly. Uh, people from your past? Possibly. Yep, possibly. There's a lot of things that can happen with this Mercury retrograde while Venus is in Aries, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, but it is going to be, listen, even though Venus in Aries is a little, you know, Dennis the Menace, it can be really, really fun unless you don't like fun. And Virgos, come on, y'all like fun. Y'all love fun. And so the eighth house also, also rules shared resources. So there could be a lot of activity around investments, inheritance, uh, bonuses, commissions, paying off debts, uh, th things like that. Okay. Uh, joint bank accounts, things like that. All right. So there's going to be activity there for sure. Now, uh, so at this point, we have the North Node, we've got the Sun, we've got Venus, Mercury, and a solar eclipse in Aries, all in your eighth house of transformation. I mean, this is going to be a very transformative month for you, Virgo. Now, now we're at April 8th. Okay. The new moon solar eclipse in Aries. So if you listen, if you live in North America, you Canada, us, you know, the path, the eclipse is happening here. Okay. The eclipse is happening uh, Mexico. I mean, it's going through. If you don't go to, if you got to go see it, just go see it. Please be make some try to try to okay try to try to see this eclipse it's going to be uh it's rare this is a rare one okay it's a total solar eclipse all right the last one that we had was 2017 but this is rare and again i'm going to talk about that more later uh but this eclipse is 
fiery. It is fiery. Okay. V dramatic. It's dramatic. It, it can be, uh, you know, uh, new moons, you want to set intentions, right? So there's a lot of you, it's, you're going to feel it. You're going to have changes in your life. Eclipses are game changers. And, you know, I, I think of, I did a Mercury retrograde video. I'll leave that just what to expect with that. I did one on eclipses, what to expect with eclipses as well. I'll leave both of them at the end of this video. If y'all want more information on that, but just know that this is going to be a fired up eclipse and there's going to be a lot of new things happening in your life. And some of them may be unexpected and some of them just may, you know, again, you know how eclipses often eclipse things in your life too, but this is all happening in your eighth house. So just think you're going through a big new rebirth is what you're going through. Virgo, it's huge. Okay. This is all about you too. All about you, right? Because Aries is the I am of the Zodiac. All right. This eclipse is very different from the lunar eclipse. That was, listen, that was in Libra. Libra's we, all right? So that was partnerships, relationship. This is about you, okay? But it can be you and how you feel toward relationships. But put yourself first here, okay? Put yourself first here. I rarely talk about Chiron. A lot of people ask questions about Chiron. I, listen, the only reason why is because I just, I, I already talk way too much. I throw a lot of astrology at you. Um, Chiron is the wounded healer. And I'm just going to bring this up now because Chiron is so so, so close to this eclipse. Okay. Very close to this eclipse. So when I say Chiron is a wounded healer, it represents, it, basically there could be some like, um, you thinking about some of the hardships that you've gone through and saying no more, you could have some moments of healing around this time, but just know that this is going to be a pretty, pretty big eclipse because uh, there's already a lot of changes happening in your life anyway. So uh, a lot of big things happening here. Now, the other thing is I want you to pay attention to April 10th. This is when Mars is going to conjunct Saturn. Now, I've talked about this last week for you and even the week before. I said, we're moving closer and closer to this. Now, Mars is conjuncting Saturn. Conjunctions are really, really powerful. They have this high charge about them. Okay. Mars and Saturn are the two malefic planets. They're about to West side story here. Okay. So you will feel tested in some way when it comes to partnerships and relationships, because remember Mars and Saturn are in Pisces that rules your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So just be cool. Just be cool. Just know you can be just tested and you know, it could be something that's just very, it, 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 every Virgo is different. Every Virgo has a different birth chart. You know that. So it, it, what, it's what makes you different from all the other Virgos in the world. So you could feel this like a one out of 10. Some of y'all could feel a little bit more. It could be, you know, the analogy I've been making is that it's, just imagine you just moved into a new place. All right. This beautiful mansion, you got three infinity pools. You got, you, you bought the good rugs, you know, and you invited your family and they came, but they came with uh, you know, their 20 cats and the, in a fork for your house warming gift. And so it's just one of those times where it's like, uh, because they also said, Hey, thank you for inviting us for the weekend. We decided to stay for six months. And so you just kind of have to work with those energies and be like, okay, how do I feel? figure out I'm going to feel a squeeze but I still also have to take action to for what I want right but diplomatically of course but just know there is going to be a little thing testing you uh just remember Mercury your ruling planet will be retrograde so a good time to reassess rethink the situation like I don't know if this is great y'all let's you know can I take you out to, you know, uh, uh, McDonald's and get y'all happy meals and set you on your way. You, you do you, y'all are the analytical ones, Virgo y'all do you, but just know this is a day where you may be tested. Now on the 19th, we officially move into Taurus season. This is going to be a really big deal for you. Okay. Because there's a lot of actually, and I'm going to talk about this later uh, when I break it down week by week, but there's three major aspects happening this day, major. All right. And Taurus, remember, rules your ninth house of spirituality your belief system how you see things education you could be thinking about starting something new learning something new graduating around this time there could be also publishing involved ninth house is publishing you could be really devoted maybe even have this great idea for a book maybe a website something with publishing broadcasting as well ninth house is also travel long distance travel foreign places foreign lands the, it's going to be a big thing, okay? Because on the 20th is when we do have the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Now, this is really big. 
this is a day that everyone's been talking about for years. This is this. It's come. It's here. Okay. It's been what 13, 14 years since we've had this really big. This is a planet of good luck, fortune, prosperity, uh, 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 profit, uh, meeting up with the planet of breakthroughs and surprises. So this is a day where you could get some really good surprising opportunities, a lot of good luck around this day in ways that you never really imagined. I honestly, it is going to be like, we're talking really, really good surprises. It is, it is Matt Damon doing a Dunkin' Donuts commercial with Ben Affleck. You're like, what? Amazing. I love this. So I love this for you. Remember, this is happening in your ninth house of spirituality, travel, long distance travel, education, publishing. You could, you could feel some really great stuff around this time. And again, um, a lot of luck here, a lot of money here. Be present. That's the main thing is just be aware of this day, write it in your calendar. Okay. Because you don't want to miss out on this day. All right. It could be literally raining Bitcoin outside, but if you're inside, binge watching uh the housewives all that you're gonna miss all that bitcoin so just be present be aware all right be aware um now on the 23rd yep this is when we got the full moon in scorpio this is a deep deep full moon in scorpio this is a very emotional full moon in scorpio something is coming to an end in a sign that is deeply intense so uh what makes it really emotional is um the fact that the sun is in Taurus, this moon is in Scorpio, and it, they're both squaring Pluto, which is in Aquarius, the three fixed signs. So there's going to be a little, you'll, you'll have a little wiggle room, but you're going to, there's going to be something that's going to make you really go within, okay? Really think about things emotionally, but this is definitely like a feeler. Um, just know that, you know, uh, it, there is a sense of mystery with this too, with, with uh, just looking at it. Remember full moons illuminate, write things down. I really want you to write things down. I want you to write things in a journal. You may feel compelled to this day as well, uh, because this full moon in Scorpio, Scorpio rules your third house. Okay. Third house is writing, reading, uh, 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 gaining knowledge, it's communication as well. Uh, so all of those could be activated for you around this time. Virgo, it was getting really late. It was getting really dark. So I just decided to do your reading the next morning. Uh, I didn't want to give you a reading where I felt like really burnt out. So uh, because it had been a long day. So Virgo, what the other thing that I was going to say is that the day that I dropped this reading is the official day of my two years year anniversary of launching this channel on March 27th. If, if that's the day that I'm going to drop this, but it'll be this week that uh, we can all celebrate. So I just want to thank you for, I'm going to do my little... Okay, so uh, just want to thank you all for being here and supporting me. I wouldn't be here without you, Virgo. So I really do appreciate it. So Virgo, let's do it. Let's see what's going on for you for April 2024. Again, this is for Virgo and Virgo rising. And if you do want to read for your moon, your Venus, all those other placements, if you know your birth chart, you are absolutely welcome to uh, Virgo. But let's get started. See what's going on for you for such a big, big month. 2024 and my dog is going a little crazy here no way because she's she she y'all know y'all know ruby's a virgo uh she actually ran into the room when i was doing your reading anyway uh virgo uh i do a traditional cult across spread it really does offer the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers we will pull clarifiers secondly virgo y'all are amazing thanks so much for being here this is going to be a month that uh yeah Wow, this is going to be a month for you. This is going to be the month that you recognize a lot of things. You're going to recognize a lot of things that uh, some things are going to go sideways. And uh, it's part of your transformation. Uh, the transformation that you seek. You see that you're seeking this here. Okay. Uh, remember all that activity in your eighth house of transformation. Really big thing and really showing up in your spread. Now. You got the four of swords and you're good, but they're going to be something you got to let go. OK, uh, which is a big theme um, Four of swords. Really, really great. OK, I love the fact that you got the four of swords. This is really nice. This is that stillness of mind. This is that, uh, you know, awakening your chakras and, and balancing your chakras. And it's just it's, it's such a nice card. And it really feels like you're spending time 
thinking of you. Remember I said Aries is the I am. All that Aries energy is the I am, right? And remember the nodes, North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra. The reason I bring that up is because this is a Libra card. In fact, it is Sun in Libra, you know, the forest sword. So that is your second house and that's self-worth and, you know, uh, 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 the value, self-value, right? So really spending the time to really think about that, okay? As you move forward, spend some time thinking about you. You spend so much time helping other people and thinking about other people. And that's not a bad quality. That's a Virgo quality. That's what you're known for. You're so like you you definitely include people in your life and 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 you're, you know, the mother hen and whatnot. But uh spend some time for you, okay? And it seems like you will. And uh remember, this is uh a, a, a month where things are gonna get really right? Uh, especially for y'all with all this activity in your eighth house of transformation. But I'm going to just show you something real quick. You see the swords pointing down at the heart chakra, throat chakra, crown chakra. So when I talk about that alignment, yes, feeling aligned moving forward. Now that you're all rested and your mind is clear, you can face all your fears. You can confront the things that you know you need to let go things that are not good for you you've got the devil you've got the devil in the heart of your spread the devil represents everything that you think the devil would represent bad behaviors vices addictions pessimistic thinking all of that and it, it is the energy vampire so something that could be draining your energy that you're just like really need to stop over analyzing this thinking about this uh or uh putting myself in this situation a lot of like self-sabotage energy but just realize that okay spend that time really thinking about what you need to let go okay you see the two people here the two people from the lover's card by the way okay so just FYI, FYI, we still have all those planets. We still got Mars and Pisces in your seven thousand partnerships and relationships. But either way, and that can be love. It can be career. Maybe there's a career where you're just like, I have a toxic boss. I have a toxic work environment. I gotta gotta figure things out. Remember, you set Mercury retrograde to reassess things in your life. But break free. Those chains are loose. You can break free anytime that you want. It is your choice. Okay. Remember. The two people from the lover's card, a card of choice. Same thing here. You can choose to be chained to the devil or you can choose to break free. It's your choice. And I want you to break free, okay? Because you did get the Ace of Cups in your challenge area. So there may be something here that's indicating something can't grow unless you hold on to this energy that just may not be good for you. You can't have this moment of this blissful, rapturous new thing in your life if you're not making room for it. If you're holding on to something that, again, could be draining your energy, could be like emotionally draining. There's something there that may need to just recognize it, recognize it but then take action, okay? Take action for it because you definitely want, look, you have death in your crown. You, you're you thinking of change. You want change. You want this big transformation, all right? So keep that, the death is, uh, this is transformation, but good one, a really good one. You see, uh, there may be changes actually happening for you in your life, okay? But it's going to be hard if you're stuck on things, okay? Stuck on things. And remember, Mercury's retrograde, so there could be things from the past that you're stuck on. You may have to just now, I've got to recognize this because it's not bringing me that joy, all right? If I'm not, if I'm not doing something about it. Now, death, you see the sun coming out on the horizon here, okay? Okay. This is, you're moving, this is what you want. You want to move toward that. You want to move through change. You got the seven of swords too, okay? And so be honest with yourself. The seven of swords came up in the root of your spread. And this is a month where, uh, you know, one of the biggest themes for everybody is being honest with themselves. It's all about being true to who you are. Authenticity is a really big thing, okay? It's always a big thing. You always want to be true to yourself. But the Seven of Swords, if I could tell you how many times this card has come up in everyone else's readings this week, wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, be honest with yourself. And, you know, there may be something that you're a little suspicious of. Uh, is it what sus is what we say these days? You're a little sus. Uh, 
uh, because this card is, you know, associated with lying, cheating, stealing, things like that. All those you know, Machiavellian things. Anyway, there is something that you may want to recognize and be honest with yourself. If it's happening in your life, let's confront it. Okay, let's confront it because you don't want to hold on to those energies. It's hard to move forward. Let this new chapter begin. I always say it. Think of it as a book. You, in order to read the next chapter, you got to finish the chapter you're on, right? That make that your life. You got to finish a part of your chapter of your life. Now, Knight of Wands, boom. You're good. You get past this devil energy. You're good. You're, this is like blazing, okay? Talk about fiery. Knights are fire. Wands are fire. This is double fire here. And this is your passions. And this is you going after the things that you want. Now, here's what's really great is that uh, a lot of y'all traveling, Virgos. A lot of y'all traveling, you may be, you may be, okay? Uh, a lot of travel involved, like adventure here as well. But ultimately, your passion is just, just not letting anything stop you, but also feeling that wind in your hair. as You know, it, it just, come on, very transformative energy here too. Um, you know, the knights, all the, you know, all the males in the wand suit, like in the court cards, they have this transformative quality about them, especially with the salamander on their tunics uh, that represent transformation. But you have it here and you have it here and, you know, you just have to recognize it. OK, let's get to your stuff, Virgo. Oh, my goodness, Virgo. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me what's going on, Virgo. Oh, my goodness. I went from I would uh, from night to day, literally with y'all um, and you know I love y'all. Great. Now, yeah, you're good. Yep. <laughs> Virgo. I love this. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a really big month for you. I want you to know that. I want you to know that this is going to be, I wouldn't even say, I would say humongous. It's going to be a, a very impactful month for you. And I said it for the beginning. I mean, this is a game-changing month. This is, this is going to be big. And you see that here you see that in your staff you see that in your spread uh you only got uh well okay, let's just keep I'll, I'll tell you later but um you're good you may be in your head a lot is what i'm saying but uh do you got judgment okay so once again affirming you want this change but you also want like this burst of like spiritual change like really being on your spiritual journey and and not letting anything stop you and having this away this card is a spiritual awakening i mean you see archangel gabrielle blowing the trumpet all right the dead are rising the dead are gray gray and tarot's wisdom and now it's like this is what you want this is all and this is what i want you to have i want you to use that jupiter in your you know in taurus in your ninth house of spirituality I want you to use that now. Remember, Jupiter is also faith. And so I want you and wisdom as well. OK, use that now. Go deep and really, really have those moments. It's been so uh, it's going to be so great for you. Um, I'm, I think my computer was on it to turn off that volume. Um, the other thing is with uh, you could be very spiritually active. And when I say spiritually active, you could have a very big moment of clarity, very big moment of realization this month. Like, yes, I am seeking this meaningful life experience and I want it to be enriching. This is going to be one of those months because you also got the King of Swords. This is really great in your external factors area. Now, this is really interesting because there's a lot of what's happening here seems to be something that's going to be uh, pretty significant in your day to day. Uh, you've got judgment here, which is attributed to Pluto. Pluto is an Aquarius in your sixth house of everyday activities. All right. Um, and you are the native ruler of the sixth house. Now you've got the King of Swords, who is Aquarius. And so the King of Swords is someone who has a lot of power, authority up here. Very clever, very strategic member of Mensa in the medieval times, right? This is the King of Swords, but he's also someone who has faced all his truths, faced all his truths. No one can hide anything from him either. Okay. And so, yeah, there is going to be a sense of someone 
Uh, that could be very supportive of you this month. And sure, it could be an Aquarius like me, right? Uh, or Aquarius rising or whatever. But there is still just some presence that could be really, really supportive in, in helping you see things, okay? Head above the clouds here, being very headstrong and being ready to strike, okay? That is the king of swords, all right? So if it's you that's skirting things and, and not being honest with yourself and not wanting to see things and uh, because of this devil energy, maybe the devil's, you know, bat wings or uh, hiding all the good things from you. You can't see past it. Like, yeah, there's going to be someone that helps you out, especially because you also got the emperor. Now, this is power. This is power. This is the emperor. This is the he rules the kingdom. He lays down the laws. He's that guy. He's that guy. But we love that guy because he keeps that order. And he, when I say he's the ruler, a ruler of his destiny, okay, ruler of his destiny, that's you. That's you. That's what you want, okay? You want to be sitting in this throne? You can have it. You can have it. You can have anything you want. You just got to get rid of that double energy, and you're going to be fine, okay? Remember, uh, also, the emperor is Aries, right? You see the ram all over his throne? Um and all these uh, planets and, and, and the eclipse in Aries in your eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth, life cycles. But the eighth house is also shared resources, but also that intensity, that power, empowerment, because Pluto's at play here. Anyway, you also have the ten of cups and your final outcome. So you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. This is this is it. This is it. Um, especially if you are here for partnerships or relationships. Um, because you do see, like I pointed out, the couple here in the heart of your spread in the devil card. And now you have the couple in the ten of cups. And, but this is total enjoyment. This is happiness. This is joy. So this is where you're going. As long as you get rid of that devil energy. Uh, this is the only rainbow in tarot. So you, you have this promising future. Uh, a lot of enlightenment in this card. Uh, and the other thing that makes it very uh, partnership relationship related is the fact that this card is Pisces. <laughs> So Pisces rules your 7,000 partnerships and relationships. So really nice. Uh, and this is just a great time to just, again, spend some time thinking about the things, reassessing things. It, maybe it's even a part of yourself that you're like, I've got to just, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to think this way anymore. Or maybe I feel I'm too hard on myself or maybe I'm thinking too negatively about things. Maybe I'm always constantly saying nothing happens for me. There's something that you've got to just recognize and remove because then you open all these doors and you just hit the ground running with a knight of wands. You got the king of swords. You got judgment of the emperor. Like, uh, Virgo, you're good. You're good. Okay. Just don't just, just get rid of that devil energy. Okay. Now let's break it down week by week. Um, here, let me pull this. I got a Virgo. So the first week. OK, so the first week of April. OK, on the first April 1st, Mercury retrogrades in Aries. All right. This is uh, it, it happens right away. You may already be feeling it right now. That's how strong this Mercury. It's in Aries. Aries is so powerful. So it's happening until April 25th. All right. So on April Fool's Day. So uh, listen, I'm, I'm not going to make any uh, like any April Fool's jokes. Just know that today is the day that uh, the love is blind is canceled. No. OK, uh, so uh, just know that this is, you know, when I say it's retrograde until April 25th, again, Mercury, your ruling planet. It affects you, again, a lot more than the other signs when Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury being the trickster, right? And when it's Mercury's retrograde, you know, other things can go a little, you know, you misplace things, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of, you know, even travel delays, things that you know Mercury retrograde is known for. But just remember, use this to your advantage. Just don't sign big contracts. Don't make really big purchases, Wait until May. May is the luckiest, best month of 2024. Wait until then, okay? Just wait wait it out a little bit. So buffer that 25th. So just even the days, all of April, just if you have to do something big, like signing contracts, 
wait until May. If you can, nothing's wrong with doing it during Mercury retrograde. It's just advised to do it after because, you know, it's it, you have higher chances of some things not changing. Um, so anyway, on the third, Venus will conjunct Neptune. Uh, amazing. If you are here for partnerships and relationships, remember, Venus conjuncting Neptune is happening in Pisces. They're both in Pisces in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. This is soulmate energy. This is when you look at your partner. It could be even like a, a, a BFF or a, a, your boss, whoever it is, seeing like deep in their soul. Like this is such a beautiful aspect, very romantic aspect. If you're not here for partnerships, relationships in any capacity, this is so much creativity. This is a burst of creativity. We're talking about Venus here, okay? Venus and Neptune. So I really love this aspect for you. And then on the fourth, we talked about it. Venus is going to go into Aries. Uh, and that's just very passionate, wild energy. Uh, but remember, Venus is money too. So again, there could be some stuff with money for y'all, especially with the eighth house uh, representing shared resources, uh, investments, inheritance bonuses, paying off debts, things like that. Um, and then on the sixth Venus will sextile Pluto. This is like this deepening of love that I really love for you. It's really, really nice. And you could be someone that is just looking out for everybody this day. You could be a huge magnet. This is a very alluring day. Uh, so I really like this. If you're single, by the way, you better go out there at this point. You better go out there and mingle. Uh, go to the bars, the uh, you know observatories, wherever you meet singles. I don't even know. Uh, but let's see what's going on for you, Virgo, for the first week of April. Good for you. Good for you. You got the Six of Swords. Good for you. Okay. I love this. You're moving forward, especially mental, like up here. Okay. Moving forward. You see where my finger is at here on the turbulent water. Look at which way they're going. They're going, they're moving past it now. Okay. So there's this big transition that's going to be happening with you this week. Remember, a lot of it can be reassessing things, but reassessing you as well. Uh, but this is, you know, sort of the mental suit thinking, logic, all of that, all of that, communicating as well. But this is just you put, getting in a better mind space, headspace or mindset, all of those. <laughs> uh, but this is really great because there's a lot of protection and security uh, as you move forward. Now, on the second week, on March, oh, March, April 8th, uh, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Obviously, we'll talk about this more in the weekly reading, but this is the big one. This is the big one. And Hello. Uh, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. It is in your eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth, life cycles. Like this is big. This is a big one. So just pay attention. OK, you may even want to think about last year. OK, April 2023, uh, when we had a new moon uh, solar eclipse in Aries. See what happened around that time. You may see, you know, uh, just echoes around this time as well. But on the 10th, remember Mars conjuncting Saturn and new moon, uh, obviously new beginnings. Uh, Mars conjuncting Saturn on the 10th. I talked about this. You could feel a squeeze in partnerships, relationships. There could be something here. Uh, you may want to, f it, something's going to bring out like that discipline in you and uh, patience, uh, maybe even impatience. That's why you want to work with these energies. It is uh, Mars and Saturn. So the, again, the two malefics, West Side storying right now. So just really just, just be aware of this. And if you feel a squeeze, just you got this. You're cool. You're Virgos. You you can think it. You you'll think you'll think it through. You'll think it through. Uh, but then the great thing is that on the 11th, the Sun conjuncts Mercury. So we have a Mercury Kazemi, your ruling planet Kazemi. Now it's in its inferior position. It's an inf we call it inferior conjunction because it's a uh, retrograde. Mercury's retrograde, but it's not a bad thing. It's just again using this moment to rethink, uh, uh, even writing speaking, researching, all of that, there could be this refresh, this light bulb moment that you have, this moment of clarity. So I really love this for you because it comes right after that Mars conjunct Saturn. Um, so uh, like problem solving, solutions, things like that, a refresh here. Okay, so let's see what's going on for you, Virgo, for the second week of April. Three of Pentacles. 
work <laughs> work uh, I, literally too i mean you can see the two uh people here working the two architects working with the stonemason now they can't build the cathedral without the stonemason and vice versa so yes this is literally like teamwork this is teamwork making the dream work working with others for success but also something new coming through maybe a project that you're working on uh there could be something new coming through where it other people are involved uh and there's a lot of bonding in this card too so yeah this new moon is bringing new things okay and it is pentacles remember there is something about money here this week and again we'll go deeper in the weekly reading now on the 19th on uh the third week so we officially move into Taurus season. This is going to be very interesting for y'all. And I love it for you, especially this day, because Mercury will conjunct Venus this day. Uh, amazing. That's absolutely amazing. This is, uh, you know, you could just be very charming. Uh, people could be compelled by you. Even the way that you're speaking about something, like people could be listening to you now. You could be heard now and vice versa. You could be like uh, really compelled by people, but there is a sense of you bringing people together around this time very interesting with the three of pentacles coming up right before that but on the same day on the 19th mars will sex out both jupiter and uranus so this is all in your ninth house of spirituality okay uh but also long distance travel publishing education there could be something there really um, stimulating very exciting for you something that you're just like i'm excited to move forward with this it's a very optimistic time it's also uh, especially with the mars six on uranus a really good time to break patterns Okay, now this is happening right before the 20th when Jupiter conjuncts Uranus, the biggest day, a day that deserves his own holiday. I mean, this is a big day. Uh, well, I guess every 13 years. But anyway, uh, this is the um, the day of something unexpected uh, and surprising opportunities. Okay unexpected opportunities, surprising opportunities and breakthroughs that are happening around this time can be uh, you having a big boost of spirituality, uh, really seeing something in the way that you need to see things, uh, but also travel related, long distance travel, something with foreign cultures, something with publishing, broadcasting, education, but also just think about Jupiter conjuncting Uranus in Taurus, all right, the financial sign. So Jupiter, all about luck. And I, I mean, there's a lot of money stuff here is what I'm saying too. So just be aware, be present this day. Um, and, 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 and I'm excited to see what happens for, for, for y'all. Okay. So, uh, now on the 21st, the sun will square Pluto. We'll talk about this in the weekly reading. Okay. This is, uh, could be a lot of ego at play this day. Just, just be aware and be cool. You know, use this Pluto energy to feel empowered. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Because we can talk about this a lot more in the weekly. But just know this is a, a day where there may be a little bit of like, mm, uh, you have to stay authentic, all right? Stay authentic and don't let any... Don't poke the bear. Don't let any bears poke you. So let's see what's going on for you, Virgo, for the third week of... April. Oh, you got the five of swords. So yeah, do not poke the bear. <laughs> but here's the thing, Virgo, to be honest, it may be you. It may be you that may be uh, wanting to like, Arr. so be cool this day. Okay. Be cool. Put on your, put on your, uh, you know, your, your cool sunglasses, put on your hat, put on, you know, whatever you need to do, go have a, a diet Coke by the pool. You'll be fine. Listen, this is a card of self-respect and self-dignity at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a conflict card. It's a conflict card. But ask yourself, can you drop the swords like everyone else has? Can you do that? This is a day where you just may be like, uh, but uh, there could be something that does come up where it may be not seeing eye to eye with others. Uh, and it could be if, uh, you know, I'm getting an energy of like, there may be some people that's not appreciating you at this time. So keep that in mind. And that could just really hit a nerve <laughs> this week. Hopefully it doesn't, but I'm going to clarify that. But yes, again, it can be someone else. Remember with that, uh, what is it? The sense wearing Pluto, it could be someone else there. That's intense. And it could be, um, you know, uh, someone with a lot of ego at play, uh, but let's see, let's, let's clarify it. Wow.
so the the so you see what just happened here. The biggest thing that's coming through for me is that uh, be cool, be cool. Because if you're spending all your energy, if you're exerting all your energy and your mind on this, on some sort of conflict, not seeing eye to eye with someone, you could miss out on this, the two of cups, the soulmate card. We, in layman's terms, it's like the soulmate card, the twin flame card, the true love card. This is love transcending time and space itself. This is someone that's got your back. This doesn't even have to be love. It can be platonic. It can be partnership and career. This is absolutely amazing. Okay. So lay down the, lay down the swords, lay down the swords. Uh, that's really amazing. It could also be like about a partnership. Sure. This quarrel could be about partnerships, but you'll be fine. As long as you're cool, let these things go. You're going to be fine. Wow, there's a lot of partnership stuff happening for y'all. A lot of partnership stuff happening for you. But this is, this is joyful. This is two becoming one. So it's really great. Uh, in a way, it's almost like this needed to happen to recognize. Okay, to have this outcome. Now, uh, the last week of April. Oh my goodness, what a week! We kick it off on the 23rd with the full moon in Scorpio. We will talk about this more in the weekly, but. This one's going to be interesting, and this is the one where I want you to just be very mindful of maybe how you speak, uh, because it's happening in your third house of communication, and this is a very emotional one. And if you, I mean, like, I mean, speak and communicate, you may be very emotional when you do it. It's just like with Mercury retrograde, there's, you know, obviously miscommunication. So just be mindful when you speak. But this is the, you know, full moon in Scorpio really deep it's really deep very emotional you could be doing a lot of soul searching around this time as well uh it could be something with siblings as well siblings aunts uncles cousins neighbors uh something here that may be illuminated uh remember full moons culminate too so something coming to an end uh 20 or april 25th mercury does go direct in aries but remember uh pat it pat it until the end of the month you know, if you have to sign a contract or, you know, buy a new laptop or whatever, wait until May. But if if you can, if you can. OK, now on the 28th, Mars will conjunct Neptune. Very interesting aspect. Again, in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships, there is something here. You know, what's really interesting is you did get the uh, seven of swords. Yeah. So remember, there could be that deceptive energy that's with Mer mars conjunct neptune as well it is like this burst in imagination creativity uh uh even you know spirituality here that i want you to put that energy toward okay your intuition but we'll talk about this more neptune does bring a little bit of illusion so smoke and mirrors so just keep that in mind uh just be intuitive trust your intuition now the 29th venus moves into taurus the day after mars moves into aries venus is at home in taurus venus is a ruling planet for taurus mars is at home in aries mars is a ruling planet for aries this is happening at the end of the month so we'll talk about it more in may because you're going to feel it more in may all right but just know this is gonna be amazing this is gonna be uh, like things are going to get fired up, but in a good way, in a really good way. Uh, and your transformation is definitely happening. So let's see what's going on for you. All right, uh, Virgo, let's see what's going on for you for the last week of April. And you're good. Um, I love that Venus is, go is going into Taurus. That's, oh, it feels so... Venus in Taurus is like the Empress card. Oh, it's just, there's so much comfort. Anyway, you got the hair phone, so you're good. This is just uh, a lot of spirituality. Remember, trusting your intuition, you already have. So here's the thing. The Hierophant is Taurus, and you already have all these planets in Taurus, especially the sun in Taurus, which is nice now, in your ninth house of spirituality. He's the connector between the divine, our physical reality. It looks like you will be heard. You will even have this platform. Uh, you will have a voice. You will feel very influential. The first major arcana where other people appear other than the main figure. You see the two monks here, but the thing that I'm going to point out is that you see the 
the two great columns. Remember, gray and tarot is wisdom. You already got that here. You got it all over here. You got a lot of wisdom that you're moving toward. Uh, so you're good. You're absolutely good. Please identify that thing that you know that you have to let go. Again, it can be pessimistic thinking. It can be an actual relationship. It can be something in career. They're just what resonates with you. Okay, Virgo, thanks so much. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what is going on, Virgos. Um, and uh, we'll go deeper next week. Okay, we're going to talk about these placements a little more next week. All right. Thanks. Or next week's. All right. Thanks so much, Virgo. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.